So, hello, welcome to this video. Uh, this is a uh, part one of a two-part series talking about a very, very specific protocol to manage difficult and uh, calcified canals, essentially. So, I suppose one of the most challenging uh, aspects to root canal is shaping, um, and specifically shaping all the way to the apex. So, we've, we've all been there, especially if you've done lots of root canals, especially when you're quite new to doing root canals, is that for some reason, when you're using your shaping files, so your hand files, or you're using your rotary files, you just can't quite get to the end. And, and sometimes, you know, you're gonna use hand files and they're reaching the end, and then your rotary files aren't quite getting even close to where the hand files were getting to. So today's uh, video, the first part, is gonna show you a demonstration on how to manage a difficult canal, and we're gonna use these fantastic section teeth again. So I've been working with Tooth Saver for a few years now, and Daniel liked to show me his uh, new equipment and new protocols. And um, I, uh, I was particularly interested in um, his uh, collaboration with Plan B and using these specific mini cut files. And um, you know, I, I asked Daniel, could I, uh, you know, showcase this with a video because I think it's a it's a really really useful way of how to manage to get down these really really difficult canals. What I would say though is um, this uh, protocol might be um, not for the, the absolute beginner because this protocol um, relies on a hybrid system. So usually when you're first starting out, you're just gonna use you know, a generic system like Wave One Gold or you know, Pro Taper or High Flex. And then you're gonna specifically use the protocol that the manufacturers suggested. In this case, we're gonna use a hybrid system we're going to use uh, both tooth saber files and these plan b mini cut files as well we're also going to use a patented uh, reciprocation motion and then it goes without saying doesn't it that using this hybrid system uh, we, you know you're going to need specific equipment and obviously the first and most important thing is the correct irrigant so here i'm using two percent sodium hypochlorite i like to use two percent I think it's a nice way up between safety and disinfection. And then we're going to use 17% um, EDTA to remove our smear layer at the end. And of course, to activate this irrigant, we're going to use this Ultra X uh, ultrasonic activator. Fantastic bit of kit. We're going to use the heated plugger. If you haven't got one of these, I strongly suggest you get a heated plugger. Even if you are just an amateur at root canal, I think just using this just saves a lot, a lot of time and heartache when you're obturating. You're gonna require a motor which is highly customizable. So in this case, I am using um, the AI Black motor. Um, I absolutely love this motor, it's fantastic. Um, you can change all the different settings on this, uh, uh, this motor. And it also has T mode, which is fantastic. And it's got the integrated apex locator as well. So you're gonna, that is what you're gonna require most importantly in this case, you're gonna need an integrated apex locator, mainly because you are using these uh, glide path files and you don't know the working length as of, um, you know, as you're using them. But also um, you need to, to be highly customizable because you need to set uh, the specific uh, reciprocation motion for the tooth saber files. Another important aspect of uh, the motor is that you have an integrated apex locator. Um, and, you know, it, I suppose um, early on when these first came out, they weren't very uh, sort of popular or they weren't very um, useful. But actually, um, this black AI motor, the integrated apex locator, is very, very good. And, and also, there's cost, you know, you can customize this uh, dramatically. And you're going to require these D finders, okay? Um, you know, if you're a, a regular on my channel, you know how much I absolutely love these D finders. Um, they come in different sizes. They come in a size eight and a ten and a twelve, and they also come in different lengths, okay? Using the smaller lengths, they're they're a bit more stiff, and then you can get to to length it a little bit bit easier. We have the one fill. This is the bioceramic sealer we use, and it's got this nice little visco tip on the end here. I think this is really a must for these types of cases, just because it flows into all the lateral anatomy and all of the, you know the difficult places to get to. You can use a very specific um, irrigation tip. These are called Iriflex. 
these uh, obviously flex around into the canal space and they get really really down close to the the apex they've also got a side venting um, uh, tip so the irrigant isn't pushed um, apically it's pushed to the side and that uh, increases safety so you're also going to need some generic GP points okay um, these are from tooth saver again what I'll try and do is I'll will link all of this equipment in the co in the comment section below to so you can find these on the uh, tooth saver website and um, you also need some paper points these are very specific mini cut paper points although you don't require these you can just get some generic ones um, but these these actually were really really nice and obviously it made it much easier for me to dry the canal because these specifically uh, match the, the files that we used and we need to uh, use some Mac 2 plugs as well I like to use these over the heater plugger because I feel like the end of the heater plugger is quite malleable but these are quite stiff so you can really really push the GP down and finally we have the files so, you know, almost instantly you might get a little bit worried here and you might think that is a hell of a lot of files. We'll get into this, but I would suggest that in most cases, you're only going to require uh, three files at most. So if I take those away. So um, in 90% in of cases, you're gonna use the orifice opener, the glide path and the final shaping file. And it all depends on how much you want to shape the, uh, the, the the canal up to. This is obviously a 2003. You might want to shape the canal up to a 2503, and this is what we do in the case. But all those other files, they are specific for very very difficult connect cases. So one when we talk about the, uh, the this flow chart, it, most of the time you're just going to um, follow a really really simple path. But deliberately today, what I've done is I have chosen a difficult tooth to shape. So we use all of the pathway. So most of the time, you're going to find a really, really easy canal. You're going to shape it with just a couple of files. But there's always that option to, um, in the background, get more files out and, and, and you know, tackle those really, really difficult cases. So once you've got all the equipment, um, what I want to show you now is kind of a little bit of a flow chart on exactly where we're going to be with this protocol. And um, the, the problem with flow charts and, and, and protocols is that obviously teeth are infinitely complex on the inside. So what I want to say is that, you know, use this flow chart as a kind of an aid memoir, but it's not something that you should completely stick to. And you'll notice during this protocol that I've video today with the section teeth that I don't specifically stick to the flow chart, um, you know, completely and absolutely. So I want to make this part of the video uh, the shortest of all, because when you look at these kind of flow charts, it just gets really, really complicated and very, very boring. The first thing is if you just take a screenshot of this, this would be a really good idea just so you can use it as, like I say, an aid memoir. Um, but there are two parts to this flow chart. The first is this part here on the left. So this part of the flow chart is just your basic canal, the one that's just going to go straight to length and you're not going to use any of the specialized files. The right hand side of the flow chart is showing you how to manage those very, very difficult and sclerosed canals. What I would say generally is the mini cut files are rotary, but the tooth saver files, they are used in a very a specific reciprocation mode and uh, the reciprocation mode has been developed by uh, Daniel and he suggests that this is the best way to use these files so it's clockwise 400 anti-clockwise 50 the torque is 4 and the RPM is 400 and, and he suggests that he has been developing this for a very very long time um, and this is the best way to use these files but personally I think the best way to demonstrate how to use this flow chart is practically. So let's move on to an extracted tooth. So it goes without saying that obviously you're gonna to need to irrigate the tooth. I'm using sodium hypochlorite. I like to fill the tooth up completely with irrigant, make sure it's all nice and clean. And this is gonna obviously clean and lubricate your instruments. And the first file we're gonna use is this mini cut blackjack. Okay, so this is our orifice opener. It's a 1505 and this the cutting efficiency on this file is absolutely insane, okay? And, and it can be used for many, many different uh, sorts of applications. It can also be used to open up MB2s. And then again, make sure we irrigate in between files. And then in the flow chart, you can see that the first file we're gonna use is this 1503 mini cut, okay? 
And it's at this point we're kind of gauging exactly how far this mini cut file is cutting. Because if this mini cut is going to length, and you're gonna know that because it's connected to your apex locator, then we don't need to think about much of the flow chart. But in this case, it's not quite getting to length. So the flow chart now expects us to move over to the 1403 tooth saver file. So we can't get down with the 15 and we're trying to attempt. And, and, and if you can get down to the apex with this 1403 tooth saver file, again, we move back to the normal part of the flow chart and then we go um, you know, down the, down the line. But again, in this case, we can't quite get to length. Weirdly enough, this is where we go for our ham files for the first time. So usually in your normal protocol, what you'd expect is that you'd use your ham file straight away. But in this case, obviously we're using the rotary files to try and get down to length. And um, sometimes with these ham files, we can kind of get to the, 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 the working length and then we go back with our 1403. But again, in this case, we can't quite get down the working length. So if you follow the natural progression of this flow chart, we're now gonna move over to our 1802. And in this case, we're gonna use it in a novel way. So we've got this novel reciprocation move movement. And also what we're not doing is we're not activating the file and then um, shaping the tooth. We're gonna place the file to length. We're gonna get it as far as we can, unactivated, and then we press the activation button. The file then reciprocate and then we sweep it out. And then we move over to our 2003 file. Again, we're gonna place the file to as far as it can get. We press the button, we activate it, and this reciprocation movement, and then we sweep it out. And we we, we just take our time with this. We, we, we don't wanna rush because we don't wanna ledge. That's really, really important. And um, we wanna do lots and lots of irrigation. Once we've done a few sweeps with those two files, we're gonna again get our DFinder and try and uh, get a little bit further. As we can see here, the file is just reaching a little bit further, but still getting a bit stuck on this tight bend. And then we're gonna just go back in, we're gonna repeat ourselves. We're gonna use the 1802 and we're gonna put it in unactivate it and then sweep it out. And you'll notice here that these files are very, very, very slowly starting to reach down to the apex. Again, back in with the 2003. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna get too cocky and confident, okay? What I don't wanna do is what I don't wanna think, oh, well, I'll just try and shape this out and I'll push it down further. Just trust the protocol, just in, unactivate it, press the button and then activate it out. And then we're gonna use our DFinder and we can see now that the shaping of those two uh, files, those 80, that 18 and that 20, has now allowed the DFinder to get a little bit closer to the apex. We're still getting that resistance from the hand file. So again, patience, time. We're gonna go back in with the 1802, same protocol. And this time you can see that the 1802 is getting further and further into the canal. We're just gonna push it in, unactivated, press the button and then out again, and then back in with the 2003, same protocol with the reciprocation motion. And again, I keep saying this, this is just slowly, slowly reaching uh, the apex. And you know, this is a really, really safe way of doing this. It's, it's, it's just ever so slightly getting nice and nicely slow to this apex. We're gonna get lots and lots of irrigants in here. And then now we notice that the size 10 D finder uh, goes to length. And now we're ready to go back onto the main kind of flow of this flow chart. We're gonna use the 1503, and this is now getting nicely to length. Again, this is ran at quite a fast RPM, but that just helps the cutting efficiency. You can see here that we're getting round that little bend, and we're gonna do lot, lots and lots of irrigant, get all that debris out, and then we're ready to recapitulate with our D finder. It's really, really important to recapitulate. And what I mean by recapitulation is we're getting our hand file down there, we're, and we're just, just sort of making sure that the canal space is still open. So once all our glide path files have got to length, we're now ready to do our final shaping and we're using this mini cut 2003 uh, shaping file. But you'll notice here that I'm not quite getting to length and I don't really wanna push this. This can be for a number of reasons, might be debris or obviously, um, you know, the, 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 the file's getting stuck a bit further up the canal. But the best thing to do is irrigate and then recapitulate. Make sure that the, uh, the canal that's been shaped by your glide path files it's still open we're going to go back in with our mini cut 2003 and you'll notice now that this is now reaching length notice the patience that i have exerted on this on this case try not to reach the end too quickly okay you're going to cause iatrogenic damage 
Again, recapitulation between row two fouls. You know, with, with wide open canals, you probably get away with this, but in these tight, deep bends, you want to keep doing this to make sure it's open. And then we're ready for our 2503 mini cut uh, final shaping file. And then again, this goes quite nicely to length. Um, lots and lots of irrigant. And at this point, I'm going to try with a 1303. But, uh, you know, I, I feel that this isn't getting to length uh, too well. And I think on retrospect, probably this uh, file is probably a little bit too large for this canal. So there's nothing wrong with kind of abandoning a larger uh, rotary file and going back down to a smaller diameter file and obturating in that case. Obviously, I've recapitulated there because I've gone with a larger diameter file, but I'm going to go back in with a 2003 just to make sure that's shaped and the, and the 3003 hasn't caused a problem. And then we're going to do our final irrigation protocol. So in my case, it's sodium hypochlorite activated with this uh, 18th Ultra X. And um, we're then going to uh, use EDTA. And then we're going to do another final rinse uh, with our sodium hypochlorite. That's personally my irrigation protocol. Some people like to do different. But sodium hypochlorite is the only irrigant that you should be using. And then once you've cleaned it all out and nicely you're ready to dry with paper points and I'm using these plan B uh, paper points here that are sort of are matched cones for the uh, specific foul we've used to shape the canal and you know as we start to remove all the irrigant from this canal we're starting to notice now that it's all nicely shaped everything's going to length we've got around that nice bend so we're ready for the comfort radiograph I'm using a generic 2503 GP cone. We fit it to length. We take an x ray and we can see now that that fits to length really, really nicely. And then we're ready to obturate. And, um, you know, this is probably the easiest part of the, the process, although some people find this difficult. We're going to obturate with one fill. We're going to use these visco tips to place the one fill into the canal space. What I would say is if you don't have high magnification, I would be very, very careful um, using uh, bioceramic in directly inside the canal space. So we're just going to very, very gently push the, uh, the GP cone to length and then we're ready just to cut the GP cone off. And that's it. You know, this is this is it seems like a lot of files, but. What I, what I would say is, um, you know, I've deliberately chosen a, a difficult uh, tooth to do in this case because I wanted to showcase the other part of the flowchart where you're going to get difficulty. But you're not going to be using those files all the time. Essentially, what you're going to be using is an orifice opener. And there's an argument to say you don't even need the orifice opener. You can use the 1503 mini cut. And I would say in the vast majority of cases, this is going to get to length. OK, you know, you're going to be using your apex locator on the motor so you're not going to be too worried about going um you know past the apex and um, personally me after i have shaped it with the glide path file i want to get myself in there with a with a hand file just to recheck the working length you know that's just my personal preference i just like to have a bit of a backstop i like to check the working length twice so there's an argument to say you, you don't even need to go in with your hand file. And then, you know, um, for all those people who like minimum preps, you can just go straight for the 2003. And, and there, you know, you, you're using two files. So one thing I want to take away from today is, is, is obviously we can see there's a, a vast amount of files we can use in these cases. But you're only going to use all those files in those really, really, really difficult cases. So overall, thanks for watching. Get ready for part two, where I'm going to um, I'm going to demonstrate this protocol on a on, on a real world tooth. And if you like uh, the content, please like and subscribe. We've also got a membership program. The membership program is support the channel, but also you get early access to uh, content. And also, if you're a certain level of tier of membership, I'll uh, answer your questions with a video short, um, and uh, and I'll post it in the membership area. Overall, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.